So this is part six, no, part seven, sorry, of my Chris Watts Two Years On podcast series. So I am listening to the tapes again, and I just want you to bear in mind, when I did the other podcast, part one, I was basically shocked and I was basically hysterical and also I just could not believe what I was hearing and I was going through all all kinds of emotions and nothing was sinking in properly and I've had to, uh, I've gotten to hear them again and um, let me just say that Chris's parents knew they were being recorded Chris told them that all his phone calls go to the DA are in the hands of the DA and prison phone calls are always recorded, nearly always recorded. So it's not like they were recorded maliciously in secret. Um, it's a matter of protocol and safety that prison phone calls are recorded. So it's not like they didn't know. Um, but I am just so disgusted with the mother's attitude in particular and the father's attitude. I don't know enough about Jamie Watts to criticize her and be critical of her um so I'm not really going to talk about her but I understand that she loves her son I understand that she's in pain and I'm going to be trying try and be fair and balanced in my analysis um in my thoughts and my thinking and my opinions so you know I am going to start with the positive things I mean they're of the Watts are obviously a very loving family there are they are parents who love their children unconditionally. There are they are parents who stick together and who are very family orientated, and I understand that, and I think it's a lovely thing to an extent. But the level of disregard, disrespect, and denial is just so profoundly disturbing that it makes you. I'm, I'm actually not surprised that he turned out the way he did. And no one is perfect. I certainly am not. Shanann was not. But the level of denial in those tapes, it's really quite ridiculous. Now, even though these tapes were apparently recorded in November 2018, the watch still had more than enough time to digest the information, to process the information, to sleep on the information. Their son had already confessed to kiss, kill, killing Shanann. They had or, he had already confessed to putting those children in oil tanks. So, and he obviously knew where the bodies were. Otherwise, they never would have been recovered. So these people had more than enough time to understand and know that their son was guilty of murder, guilty of the crime. And and yet, you know, by the time, by November, they would have known and understood that he'd lied on national television. And by the way, he had already confessed to killing Shanann. It's not like he... he um, didn't kill anybody or that he didn't confess. He had already told his father that he killed Shanann. And it doesn't matter what the reason is. The fact is he was guilty of murder. And for them to just be um, talking to him as if he's completely innocent, as, you know, his mother said she, uh, Chris has been railroaded. I mean, I just, my brain cannot even comprehend how in denial these people are and to hear them criticizing and, and talking bad about Shanann's telling him oh we knew what she was like and for them to be talk saying such horrible things about the person who represented them in court and who was trying to salvage their reputation and who was trying to make them sound like they were understanding people like they were you know, sad or sorry about what their son had done, for them to just criticise that woman who spoke for them in court and to say, you know, they never believed a word of it and they never believed that he killed anyone. I'm sorry, but th this is this this level of denial is, is beyond 
anything that I've ever, ever, ever seen. Um, I remember many years ago, Jeffrey Dahmer, that was the first crime case that really, really drew my attention. I remember way back then, his father, Jeffrey Dahmer's father, he would do interviews and he was extremely honest and open and conscious about the crime that his son had committed. He was never in denial about what his son had done. He'd all, he always knew that his son was guilty of the crimes that he was convicted of. And yet he spoke about his love for his son. And um, there's nothing wrong with that. And I admire that, you know. Um, Jeffrey Dahmer's father um, placed the blame squarely on his son, where the blame belonged. And he was um, apologetic for his son. And he um, condemned his actions and yet still maintained love for him. And that's what I call somebody who is a rational thinking person, somebody who um, can say, yes, I love my child, but he did something terrible. These people aren't even willing to recognize that their son did anything wrong. Their hatred for Shanann is so overwhelmingly strong that they can't even recognize that he is a stone cold criminal. I have to say that I am still processing it and I'm still digesting it. And I literally can't even find the words. I'm gonna be rambling a little bit here because there are no words to express my disgust about how in denial they are, how they treat Chris and talk to Chris like he's the victim, but not only that, they talk to him and treat him like he's done absolutely nothing wrong, as if he's done something good. You know, they talk to him as if Shanann deserved what she got. And I don't hear anything about how sorry they are that their grandchildren are no longer here. It's all about Chris. I just cannot believe that these parents are so in denial. Like I said, those tapes were recorded apparently in November 2018. This is after he had been sentenced when they were able to listen and hear everything. And they're talking about how the woman who represented them, that they didn't agree with anything that she said, that she rambled, that she was a lot, that she, she was a liar basically. And that um, the only reason that they went on the victim's list so they could speak in court was purely so they could speak to their son. They had no intention of talking about how upset and sad they were, about how how sad they were that they'd lost their grandchildren. It was just, they they just put themselves on the victim's list to make victim impact statements purely so they could get in contact with Chris so they could talk to him and um, for, for Cindy Watts to actually say that that the only reason why she decided to go on the victims list to speak to Chris to make that impact statement was so she could speak to him that was her sole reason it's just shocking it's it's absolutely shocking usually when I do these podcasts I have a list of things that I'm going to say uh, and I've got notes in front of me and I follow the notes, but I almost feel like I can't follow any kind of, of, of note right now. I can't, you know, I, I'm just so shocked at the inhumanity of it all. They don't seem to have any grasp or grip that their son is actually a convicted killer who killed four innocent people and he, there's no possibility that he will ever get out of prison because he pled guilty and because of what he did you don't you you don't get parole for killing four people uh and and also the fact that Ronnie could be talking about sports and and the scores of their favorite teams um when their son is actually in prison for killing four people and they could just be talking about you know sports as if you know he's at some summer camp it is absolutely blows my mind the level of denial, the level of disregard 
there's just no emotion for the victims whatsoever. It's all about Chris. And she talks about Cindy Watts. She talks about the support Chris Watts has from people all over the world as if he's some kind of rock star. As if it makes her proud that her son's got all this support. It makes her look better. It makes her feel good because it's her son and she sees her son and her children as an extension of herself. The narcissism and the entitlement is beyond anything that I've experienced. And I've seen some really entitled people and some very narcissistic people. But this is on a this is on a different spectrum. Um, Chris Watts is never leaving prison. So um, all this stuff about the police just had a theory and they don't believe a word of it. Well, Shanann was strangled and she didn't strangle herself. He knew where the bodies are. And the only reason why he could know where the bodies are is because he put the bodies where they were found in the oil tanks and, you know, dug in the ground. You know, there's no way for him to know where the bodies were if he didn't do it. Third thing is that he lied on television. He knew exactly where his family were and he lied and he lied and he lied. People who are innocent don't tell those kind of lies. You know, there, there's no way that he could be innocent and know exactly where the bodies were. So the level of denial is truly, truly astonishing. And I'm absolutely disgusted. I'm just absolutely repulsed. That's all for now.